ZMake is a popular build generation tool with support in Visual Studio Code. We will cover CMake setup in Visual Studio Code, creating the CMake Quick Start project, opening a pre existing CMake project, and of course, configuration, building, and debugging with the CMake Tools extension. This video is based upon the Visual Studio Code documentation titled Get Started with CMake Tools on Linux. This is the setup that we have used for this video. You can check the Ubuntu version that you are using by typing lsb release a. As you can see, we have already installed the C extension, but that is the bare minimum, and so we will install the C extension pack which includes the C++ extension, and more importantly, the CMake Tools extension. The documentation for CMake Tools can be found by following the links on the extension page. Before we can use the extension, we need to install CMake. Kitware are the creators of CMake, and fortunately for us, it's open source and can be easily installed using Snap. However, we've opted to install CMake directly from Kitware's own repository to get the latest stable version. Adding their repo can be done by downloading the Kitware archive script from their APT website. We've already downloaded the Kitware script. Let's run it and install the latest CMake. The Visual Studio Code Getting Started documentation recommends that we use at least version 3.27 of CMake. Let's check the version that we have, and it is a healthy 3.28.3. Next, let's use the CMake quick start command to create a minimal project. First, we open an empty folder to hold our new project. From the command palette, select the CMake quick start command. There it is, OK. Now we select the kit, and it has detected that I have only two compilers. I'll select the latest. Now the command is asking for a CMake list file, but we don't have one yet, so I'll skip that by clicking in the welcome screen. Our project will be called Hello Proj. We will create a C project. And we want an executable. OK, and now we have our quick start project a CMake file and a single main source file. Let's look at the CMake configuration that we have for this project. Here we can change the kit by clicking on the pencil icon. From here we can search for new compilers or change the compiler. We can also change the variant, i.e. the type of target. CMake is a build generator and we can generate our build files by clicking this reconfigure icon. This shows that CMake has now finished the configuration, and the build files have been generated. Now we can build. As you can see, it has created our executable. Next, debugging. First, let's add a breakpoint. You can debug without a launch configuration by using the keyboard shortcut Control F5. OK, let's stop that. Typically, you will want to create launch files, and from this link, you can create one, but it's rather minimalistic. Rather than edit that, you may find it more intuitive to use the add debug configuration command. Let's add 
the GDB launch configuration. Now that's much better. Helpfully, it tells us to enter the program name. You could write the name of the target, but it's better to use the CMake variable launch target path. You may be thinking, how would I know about these magic variables? Well, it's all documented in the CTools documentation on their CMake settings page, as shown here. Although it's not necessary for this project, we might want to update the environment. Let's say you have other project assets in your launch directory, and your executable needs access to them. To enable that, you would update your path environment variable with the launch target directory variable. OK, we've finished editing our launch file, and our debugger is now ready for launch. As expected, we've stopped on our breakpoint. Fantastic. Going back to the CMake Tools activity, we can also launch an executable without debugging. It's building. Great stuff. So, what about pre existing CMake projects? It's pretty much the same procedure. Let's open up a small CMake project and start up the debugger again. This project has two CMake files, one in the root folder and another in the source folder, which adds a library, an executable, and then links the library to the target. Given we already have some CMake files, we won't use the quick start command. Instead, we will run CMake configuration and generate the build files. Let's have a quick look at the source files. There's a main, an animal class that just outputs some text when called, and the header file. Let's put a breakpoint in the animal constructor. If we go to the run and debug activity, it presents us with a rather inviting big blue run and debug button. Let's click it. And select default configuration. That did not work. We need a launch configuration to debug this project. We could create a minimal launch file and populate it using IntelliSense with the Control Space keyboard shortcut. But let's create a launch file using the Add Debug Configuration command and select GDB Launch. As before, we will update the program name using the CMake variable launch target path. We now have a launch configuration. Let's click it and see what happens. And it's building. And now we have a debug session. Great stuff. Another very useful feature to be aware of is the CMake debugger. You can set breakpoints in your CMake scripts, like so, and configure your project with the CMake debugger. Fantastic! For large projects, this is invaluable. One final thing. Do you get tired of typing in in the command palette? Then this feature is very handy, as you can pin your most common commands, like so. OK, well, that completes our Getting Started with CMake Tools.